your stage, we welcome WTC 2019 president, Mr. Pietro Salini. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2019 edition of the World Tunnel Congress here in this beautiful Naples. I give my warmest greetings to the mayor of Naples, Luigi De Magistris, as well to Mauro Moretti and to the delightful Serena Rossi, and all of the institutions present here today, in particular to our client, Ferrovie dello Stato. Special thanks to the organizer of this Congress, International Tunneling Association, and the Società Italiana Gallerie, who very kindly invited me. I don't know exactly why, because I've been told we are almost 2,000 people here attending this Congress, and I have to say that I am the least technical expert here in attending this Congress. But it was my honor to accept. Infrastructure megatrains. This Congress is a special occasion for us to take a break from our hectic schedules and discuss the future of our sector. Our business requires us to always have an eye on the future, at least 10 to 15 years ahead of us. We know that we are building now the infrastructure that we'll use in the future and for a long time. And this is why we have to keep planning for the long term and trying to envision the future needs of our countries and our cities to build infrastructure that will last for at least the next 50 to 100 years. Tunneling is a sector that is evolving throughout the world and long planning is essential to be able to respond to the challenges posed by the megatrends, such as population growth, resource scarcity, and urban growth. To respond to these challenges, first of all, we need to develop skills to be able to manage the production and gathering of vast amounts of data in a smart way that will enable us to build in a better way. This is crucial because the amount of available data keeps getting bigger and bigger, and new technology are developed and they will allow us to move towards a greater automation of the construction processes, improving performance and re reducing costs. This leads me to identify the factors that are driving our sector forward. First one is self-driving design. Today, any virtual representation of a project is designed by people. This is likely to change in the future. What will soon take over these tasks will be artificial intelligence with mechanisms that will allow any machine to correct itself and learn from feedback. The second factor driving change in our sector is self-driving construction. The greater use of robots will result in the construction process being completely automated. Lastly, there is a self-driving system. As all the elements that make up an ecosystem will have the ability to communicate with each other and take steps to correct themselves. As I noted at the beginning, asking ourselves about the future of the infrastructure sector means asking ourselves mainly about the future of our cities. As population growth is the most relevant megatrends in our time. By 2030, the global population will exceed 8.5 billion people, a billion and a half more than today. Three billion will be found in China and India alone. This growth is already leading to a creation of mega cities, the cities that are more than 100 million of people in them. Cities that covers now 2% of the earth surface, but they are the place where half of the population lives. They are responsible for 75 of the energy consumption and 80% of the CO2 emissions. So if we manage to improve cities 
by helping them reduce emissions and better manage resources, we can make a relevant impact on the planet. So meaning the role of infrastructure for big cities. Cities are becoming more and more the great protagonists of the future, with tunneling playing a never greater role given the growing need for underground spaces to stockpile resources, dispose of waste, and most of all, develop sustainable mobility. Underground infrastructure built to move people and goods are the only solution to managing areas that are becoming even more crowded. We know that metro systems are helping reduce traffic congestion as well as air and noise pollution. But we have to consider the positive effect that the metro could have on pollution and on big cities together with rail transport, as both are strongly reducing the need for travel by car and truck. In the future, high-speed trains that now we build will be the metro of the larger megacities. If with our expertise as builders, we are able to support an increasing investment on the two sectors, metro and railway lines, we will support a cleaner planet. Evolution of tunneling. In order to respond to the challenges we face, we as builders of tunnels must continue to invest, to innovate the way we work. That means investing not only in machines and technologies, but also in minds, attracting the best talents out there, even from other sectors, to attract with them new expertise and a new way of thinking to the sectors. Although tunneling practice has been among the pioneers in infrastructure in terms of mechanical and technological development, generally speaking, it is nonetheless among those sectors that have grown less in terms of productivity and digitalization. This has prevented the sector from improving processes and products, while other sectors have been able to grow in a fast way, improving their productivity. Productivity in construction is very similar to the one at the beginning of the last century. In order for the sector to keep evolving, it has to focus on three objectives. Improve productivity by using artificial intelligence for design, planning, and construction. Improve work safety with artificial intelligence and enhance the ability to foresee risk for the people. Continue to invest on technology to reduce costs. As indicated, since the arrival of building information modeling, the key type of innovation that is further developing into the sector, from planning and design to construction and operation, is data science, with a new way of collecting and managing data. Robots and wearable technology, helping reducing risks in terms of safety during the construction phase, drones for collecting data and transporting materials. Technology is also changing our way of working. The project manager who supervises activity on a work site without, with traditional instruments will soon do it with a dashboard that provides real-time data to facilitate the efficient allocation of resources, improve productivity, and enhance safety. Let's talk a little bit about our main tunneling project, the future. In 1927, the German director Fritz Lang in his classic film Metropolis Imagine a future in which an elite lived in skyscrapers far above underground workers, forced to live in bad condition underground. Today, what lies underground is actually the new highway of the future development, with a strong role to reduce the pressure of overpopulation in major urban centers. If you think of a large agglomeration like the Grand Paris, the metro and railway lines that will run underneath it along a planet extended network will transform the outer reaches of this agglomeration into dynamic contributors to Paris' future sustainable development. We entrepreneurs, we our companies, have to invest with governments, universities, and other centers of research to encourage the implementation of new ideas and technologies 
to support an intelligent use of the underground, contributing to the well-being of future generations that will more than likely make greater use of underground space. Tunneling is a risky business. Clients have to understand it and shift essence of competition from the risk appetite of a company. And I have to, to underline that the, the worse condition is a company, the larger is its risk appetite. We have assisted to the total distract, distraction of the construction sector in Italy for this very reason. The client choices when they make the tender is his of essence. We have to drive a different type of competition, not forcing contractors and tunnel specialists to take risks that they are not able to sustain. This is very important for the future of our business. Driving all the sector to, to be none, it means that uh, there will be no more specialists into the world to do what is needed for the future. The second very important thing that uh, I want to say in provising is the investment into the future means investing on young people. We, we cannot do that alone. And training young people, it is the way we can, uh, we can pass to the future generation our competence. I, I see young engineers that are facing a very long training period just to become a manager. And their future is not so sexy because they have to work hard in very difficult condition. If they see a, their scholar mate, which have made different decisions for their future, and they've, they've chosen, for instance, to go in a software houses, or engineer of economic engineers that have gone into edge funds, of course, they have a different career period. They are immediately rich and easy life. I remember the time when I have gone into a tunnel that was 24 kilometers and the TBM was halted at the middle of it. It was a tunnel without windows. There was a very big venue of very high temperature water and mud, and the TBM was there. And this monster was there. Just to get to the, to the front, it took with that little train half an hour, more than half an hour, 45 minutes. I remember that because uh, going with that little train into, into that atmosphere, it was raising the temperature, humid, and, and the, the, the air was getting difficult to breathe. Well, uh, this is a difficult career if you do that, and, and you're going in front of a monster, because uh, I have to remember that this, this type of, of things that happens when you are a contractor, when you are a tunnel specialist, and you work in these conditions, uh, if you haven't done that before, if you probably do not know that, but this is more difficult than staying in the middle of New York and with a computer playing in front of you. So let me say to all of you that attend this, this conference that we have to think about our future and how to be sustainable, how to be sustainable as a profession first of all, and now to, to give to the, young, to the young people the opportunity to become our future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pietro Salini. Thank you.